In this video, we're going to focus on how we can use the Rapid API. And we're going to get a financial API of this, and then we're going to display that in Chart.js. So what is happening here, as you can see here, these are all the currencies here. We're covering over 200 of them. And what is happening right now, because this is the first exchange for this USD compared to any other foreign currency. And sadly enough, some countries have a massive uh, currency exchange rate, which is like this one here, 550 million per dollar. And this one is 70 million for each dollar. So that's very intense here. So that's why every other item here basically looks like a dot because it just doesn't outweigh what it's, it's a huge difference. So let's start to look how we can correct create and connect this with chart.js. So let's start to draw that specific chart. So we're going to create a chart with the rapid API. For this, you must have a, a registered account at rapid API. This is completely free. And I'm going to use a free API here. So what I'm going to look for here is basically currency scoop, which is a free item, currency scoop. Let's look for that, there we are. Click on this. And I'm doing that because this is a free item and I want just free items because I'm not planning to promote this, of course. It's just getting anything that works. So we have this here and this is very important. The reason why you need to have a registered account is because without it, uh, you cannot get the secret key. So with, with a secret key, you can start to work on that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to say here, fetch. All right, so this is the one I want. But of course, I realize I need to have first our chart uh, drawn. So what I'm going to do is go to chartjs3.com, getting started. This specific link, you can find as well in the description box. Scroll down here and then just copy this entire chunk of code here. Copy this. If you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video there. Paste this in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'll cut out this title, put the title in here, save this. And then what I want to do is I want to expand the size of the chart to 80%, save refresh there we are so we have this very very basic item here nothing fancy here what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to create first of all i need to connect to my secret key and i will not show my secret key but if you're wondering what is in the file basically there's only one single sentence here constant and then the variable of secret key equals abc whatever the key is of course so that is basically the only thing it is it's very similar like a uh, database in mysql where you have these uh, configuration with the specific passwords. So what I'm going to do is, uh, well, let, let me just add up that specific secret key or at least that file. Copy that, put that in here. Then I'm going to say here, and I need to have here the full link to get the link. I'll just grab this one here because it's just saved on the same location, except instead of having this long name, it's called secret key secret key.js all right so we've got that there save that now what i want to do here is basically go into our currency scoop here and this is as you can see i'm not even registered here but it gives us already the demo sample which is very nice so you can copy this but you need again you need without the secret key you're just not able to get this so i'm going to grab this here let's copy this and i'm using the fetch per option here there are other options here but i'm going for fetch using the fetch api so copy this entire chunk of code and then what we're going to do here is just simply we're going to paste this in here i'm going to give this a proper indentation and this here i'm going to remove this and because i have the secret key file connected i'll just say a secret key secret key there we are so now if I just save this, I should expect something in the console log. You can see here if I do that and uh, it looks quite large here. So let's minimize that a bit or reduce the size of it. Now you can see here the response. And what we get here is an object, with all this data here. You have the metadata, code 200 and disclaimer. And next we have here the response 200 and then here the date. And you can see here this is the time basically right now this is truly up to date because if i refresh this it will show here the new time which is 48 and yesterday was 21 and etc etc so what i'm going to do now is as you can see here we have these rates here and we have all of these currencies here and we have all the currency values here which is absolutely phenomenal because now we can play around with that and all what i want to do now just simple getting this data in here 
So to do this, well, let's change here the title. We say weekly sales will be removed and we're going to put in the USD as the currency uh, or the key denominator that we compare with. So we're going to change this one here. So how do we do that? Well, basically it's in here we have to work. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put in your curly braces, put here curly braces, and then basically put enter here and then enter there. Within here, I just want to first pinpoint this specific item here. How do I get this? Well, as you can see here, if I hover over, you can see the tooltip popping up showing response.base. So that's very important because you can see here, we're already on response, but we have to put another response on here, which is basically this object here and then into the base. So I'm going to say here again, dot response, dot base, save, refresh, and now it opens up and you can see here USD. All right. So we grab this and you might say, all right, so then we just copy this, put it in here and we're done. Save that, refresh. This does not work. The reason why this doesn't work is it is outside of this fetch. So we have to make sure that this is all within the fetch. So I'm going to cut all of this, cut the data here, put it in here, give it a nice indentation. Uh, all right, there we are. So now what we can do is we can just copy this one here and then, oh, well, it's already in here. So if I save this, refresh, now it works. And you can see here we get the USD item. So what I want to do more is let's change it a little bit more, give it a bit more description. As you can see here, we have this, but if I open up my console, the object shows again. And then what I'm going to do now is next, next one I want to say USD and then I'm going to grab the date, put it besides there. So we have here, uh, we can make a tiny title out of it. So I'm going to say here, concatenation. Now I say plus, or sorry, there should be a plus like that. And there's a concatenate space, because that's the USD basically. And then say here, for, Forex, for the foreign currency exchange. And we say here for date. And then the date will be here again. I'm going to put another plus here to concatenate a specific value. And in this case, <clears throat> Sorry, and in this case it will be date. So instead of base, we're going to put in the date here. So I'm going to see it. Date, save that, refresh. Let's open up or remove the developer tab. And beautiful, it shows it nicely here for X date, etc. etc. Alright, so now we have the easy part. So let's go and do more the more exciting part. Open up here. You can see here we have now a bit more tricky item. How do we get all of these items because I want to show these currency items as a label here on the X scale and I want to see these values here on the Y scale eventually. So how will we do this? Because this here, not as an array, we have like these values here. So what we need to do is here, basically this, what we call the object key. That's what we want to extract. The object key must be extracted and must be converted into an array. Secondly, the value uh, the object value must be as well extracted and converted in our array. Luckily, this is quite easy to do. So what we're going to do here, I'm just going to use it here, just here above. I'm going to say here, indentation, and then I'm going to say a constant, and let's say here the currency name, which is the object key. And when I'm talking about the object key, that's these numbers, of these letters here, and this is the value. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say equal. I'm going to say, first of all, it's an object. It is an object because it's not an array, because an object works with these per, per, curly braces. So this is all an object. So in this object, we want to pinpoint the rates here. So what I'm going to say here, object dot keys, indicating as a method to indicate that we want to convert these object keys into an array. And then we're going to say here, very simple, what is the object keys? Well, basically it's response dot response dot rates. Why the rates? Because we're still pinpointing this object here that consists of the object key and value pair. So that's the first one. If I save this now, and then I'm going to say here, console.log, currency name, put it in there, save, refresh. Once we do that, look at that, we get a full list of 220 currencies or basically values in this array. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this. And then we just remove all of this, including the brackets here. Why? It is already considered an array, as you can see here. So we're going to save that. Let's refresh this. Phenomenal. And as you can see here, it starts to show all of this. 
but of course it doesn't show yet the values so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do almost same here but what I'm going to do here now is just enter constant currency value equals object dot values and then we're going to say response response rates again very straightforward once we do this and let me just put in here parentheses parentheses and here put that in there and here parentheses save refresh loads take some time and there we are we get this huge huge list with 220 values now so now as you can imagine now we can just copy this and then we're going to put it in the data that's here of course remove all the values including the object of sorry, the array brackets save refresh and there we are so now you might say well hold on what's going on here apparently we have one with such a huge currency exchange value difference of how many millions apparently 545 million for every dollar i have no idea what this value is so i guess it's the veb i think i just i did a quick google on that one i think it's the uh, F, uh in Venezuela, the boulevard and uh, i think and in this one here i have no idea as well the trl anyway this is basically how we can do it and of course we can do so much more i will cover it in the next video